This is Jon Trusty from the Reykjavik Grapevine, bringing you the latest on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Filmed on location from Grindavik the afternoon of December 22nd to capture the footage of the town that was evacuated amid seismic unrest on November 10th and the site of the eruption near Sundnukagir that began at 10.17 p.m. on December 18th, which volcanologists have already declared over. The latest eruption is both the strongest and the shortest lived of those seen on the peninsula in recent years. The four kilometer fissure was initially producing curtains of lava at a rate of 200 cubic meters per second. But that had diminished to a third of the volume within 24 hours as the fissure consolidated down to five and then just two eruptive vents. It had petered out entirely by December 21st. While the eruption appears to be over, scientists are watching the signs that the magma chamber is filling up roughly five kilometers beneath Svartsenki, the area on which the Svartsenki power plant and the Blue Lagoon sit. It is the pressure built up in the magma chamber that resulted in the magma intrusion stretching beneath Grindavik in November and the eruption in December. The Grepan spoke on Friday with vulcanologist Dr. Thorolde Sorosun, who was recently named dropped by late-night host Stephen Colbert as the man so nice they thwart him twice about the situation. He said that, quote, if the magma continues to flow into the chamber at the same speed as before, the chamber is likely to empty itself again by the beginning of January, end of quote. This means that the speed of which the Earth rises under Svartsenki determines when yet another disruptive geological event might occur, whether it be another magma intrusion or another eruption. Each time the magma chamber fills, the pressure builds and the magma needs somewhere to go. In December, it pushed through the surface in an eruption. The formation of the intrusion on November 10th and accompanying high magnitude earthquakes inflicted considerable damage on the town of Grindavik and caused a grape pen to form through town where the ground has sunk by a meter. The residents evacuated during that event are still displaced, but they have been permitted to return home during set daytime hours to collect belongings and tend to their property. The area remains closed to the general public. In a statement late on Friday the 22nd, the chief of police in the area announced that Grindavik residents would be allowed to return home on the 23rd. This means that those residents who wish it will be able to spend Christmas at home at their own risk. The statement also said that the decision will be revised on the 27th and that the town remains of limits for all others. Volcanologists have traditionally divided the Reykjanes Peninsula into seven distinct volcanic systems. These systems line up side by side on a diagonal along the length of the peninsula. The most westward system is not far from the Keflavik International Airport. The most eastward system is east of the city of Reykjavik. The eruption in the Fagradalsfjall system, which began on March 19, 2021, marked the beginning of what volcanologists believe to be a new phase of volcanic activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Subsequent eruptions in that system began on August 3rd, 2022 and June 10th, 2023. Baratasfjall is not believed to have erupted in the last volcanic phase during the Middle Ages. Apart from its size, the latest eruption is distinctly different from the previous three. The lava was colder, flowed faster and could spout higher into the sky. This has to do with the fact that by the time the magma chamber had finally built enough pressure for its content to find a pathway to the surface, the lava had cooled down and crystallized. Many geologists have in recent days pointed to similarities between the situation north of Grindavik and the 1975 to 1984 Krapla eruptions near Lake Mivat in the north of Iceland. There, a large magma chamber in the Krapla caldera repeatedly filled up and when the chamber had become pressurized enough, it released the magma. The result was 24 magma intrusions in nine years. 
nine of those intrusions resulted in eruptions. Based on what we know, it is likely that we will see more volcanic activity in the near future and that the future's pro prospects of the town of Grindavik continue to be in doubt. The town's mayor has called for berms or protective walls to be built north of the town to deflect any potential lava flow. Such protective walls have been built to protect the Svartsenki power plant in recent weeks. We've also learned that Iceland's most popular tourist attraction, the Blue Lagoon, is sitting on top of a large active magma chamber. One of Iceland's most important connections to the outside world is Keflavik International Airport, located close to the last few eruptions. This had led some people to worry about this connection being severed. While the eruptions on the peninsula continue to take place inland, it is very unlikely that they will disrupt air traffic, although an eruption off of the peninsula might cause some, though probably not severe, problems. Thank you for watching. For more information, go to www.grapevine.is.